Our first African stamp of the season, and it's a great looking one from Zimbabwe. We can see that the stamp is torn on the top right corner and was worth one Zimbabwean dollar. The imagery depicts a musical instrument being played, and the name of that instrument written below, Mbira. Also there is imagery of the Zimbabwe bird, which we will discuss in a moment. The name of the artist is in the bottom left, Rose Rigdon, and the year in the bottom right, 1985. There is a cancellation across the stamp, but no postmark with any additional details. It's a fairly average size stamp measuring 26 by 30 millimeters. So this stamp is part of a series that was issued in 1985 that displays imagery of Zimbabwean life, from culture and music to industry and the natural beauty that Zimbabwe has to offer. Now, the stamp is triggering a number of topics that I would like to cover. And when it comes to Southern and Central African stamps, I could probably talk for hours because they're very interesting. So I'm going to keep it at a high level. And of course, I encourage you to go ahead and look further into the topics. But the first thing is, what is this Zimbabwe bird? It shows up on all these stamps as well as other Zimbabwe stamps and their currency and even their flag. Well, it's a national emblem and it's on the coat of arms and worn by Zimbabwe's military as well as its sports teams. The emblem is actually depicting a statue that was discovered in the ancient city of Great Zimbabwe. There were eight of these soapstone statues discovered standing guard on the great city walls with this bird carving on top of the pedestal. The type of bird is believed to be a battler eagle, but it's carved with human features such as the feet as well as the mouth. The symbolism was of great significance to the ancestors of the Shona people that lived there. What's interesting is that some of these Zimbabwe bird statues were taken away by explorers in the 1890s. Now, most of those statues have returned back to Zimbabwe, including one as recently as 2003 from Berlin. So Zimbabwe has been able to reclaim seven of its eight statues. Just one remains missing, and it's still on foreign soil. Now, the other imagery on the stamp is this instrument, the Mbira. It is informally referred to as a thumb piano, but there are several variants of the name that are sometimes used interchangeably. Mbira, Kalimba, Karimba. Some of the names are generic and some point to subtle differences between the instruments. My little Mbira or Karimba is overly simplistic, which I think was for the tourists, but it gives a good example of all the components that make up the instrument. It's basically this wood-based board with these steel keys that the player uses to strike and release, creating this bell-like sound. The image also shows this halved calabash gourd that the mbira is placed in that helps to amplify the music. My mbira has something similar, it's just a lot smaller, but also that amplifies the music. Let's see if I can make a tune. Okay, so back to Zimbabwe. Now, you'll come across a number of stamps that are from Zimbabwe, but not under the name Zimbabwe. And this is where things get a little confusing because Zimbabwe was formerly known as Rhodesia. And before that, Southern Rhodesia. There was also a Northern Rhodesia and a Nyasaland that formed a federation and were known as Rhodesia and Nyasaland. Today, you'll know them as Malawi, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. Let's take a look. So as I mentioned, you'll find stamps from Northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia, Nyasaland, which is now Malawi, and Southern Rhodesia, as well as Rhodesia, which are now Zimbabwe. You will also find stamps from the federation of the three, the two Rhodesias and Nyasaland, known as Rhodesia and Nyasaland. Oh, and this guy over here, this is Cecil Rhodes, a controversial historical figure today, but what Rhodesia was named after. Actually, he named Rhodesia after himself. Rhodes, Rhodesia. But he was the owner of the missing Zimbabwe bird. It's the only Zimbabwe bird statue that hasn't returned back to the country. And it's still in Cecil Rhodes' old house in Cape Town. Some believe that Zimbabwe has been going through difficult times because it hasn't got all eight of its birds back. Huh. 
Also, in 1965, the government of Rhodesia tried to declare independence without the agreement from Britain, and it issued this stamp. This was considered an illegal act of UDI, or Unilateral Declaration of Independence, and this stamp was considered illegal. Any mail arriving in the UK with this stamp was considered unpaid, and was therefore surcharged accordingly. How about that, an illegal stamp? One more thing about Zimbabwe. I was digging around and I found this set of stamps. This one was worth 100,000 Zimbabwean dollars. Whoa! Remember, remember when we were talking about Mexico's inflation in episode 5? Well, Zimbabwe experienced hyperinflation from 2007 onwards and it absolutely devastated the currency. These stamps were issued in 2007 and their extremely high values were indicative of even more craziness that was yet to come. Eventually, Zimbabwe issued non-denominated stamps without any value because they couldn't keep up with the inflation. Zimbabwe's currency was eventually abandoned and you can even see on the banknotes that were carried around 25 billion, 50 billion and this one that was never really used 100 trillion dollars which is a lot of zeros. Oh, but check it out. There's the Zimbabwe bird. As always, I encourage you to look further into the topics we discussed today. I just gave a very high overview of Zimbabwe's history and their stamps. There's still plenty of videos to come, so hit that subscribe button and follow me on social media. Thanks for watching and see you next time.